This evening, first, tragedy at the Harbor Bridge. A morning commute turns fatal as a pensioner is struck and killed by a truck. We'll bring you the heartbreaking details and the calls for heightened road safety. Plus, simplifying inheritance. The National Assembly passes landmark amendments to ease financial strain on grieving families. Find out how the changes could help you in difficult times. Also, human trafficking case unfolds. A Venezuelan national faces serious charges of trafficking and exploitation involving three victims, including a minor. The latest from the courtroom and the ongoing investigation. And a beacon of hope. Prime Minister Mark Phillips inaugurates Ghana's second Hope and Justice Center, offering sanctuary and support to victims of violence. Learn how this initiative is reshaping justice and compassion. Finally, Haiti in crisis. As gang violence escalates, the UN evacuates staff from Port-au-Prince. We'll explore the impact of the chaos on aid efforts and the people trapped in the turmoil. Stay tuned for these stories and more coming up next on Headline News Update. Welcome to this broadcast of Channel 2's Headline News Update for November 26, 2024. I am Bibi Backus. Thank you for joining us. First up, a 78-year-old pensioner was fatally struck by a truck near the Demerara Harbour Bridge, prompting a police investigation. More from Malcolm Carter. Police are investigating a tragic accident at the Demerara Harbour Bridge that claimed the life of a pensioner early Monday morning. Sheikh Hassan, a 78-year-old resident of her stilling, East Bank Demerara, died after being struck and crushed by a truck. The accident occurred around 6.19 a.m. on the Western Carriage Way of Peters Hall Public Road, East Bank Demerara, near the Harbour Bridge. According to police, motor lorry GAC 6742, driven by Arif Hussein, was heading north along Peters Hall Public Road when the incident occurred. Traffic ranks were directing vehicles in the area and signaled northbound traffic to proceed. At the moment, Hassan attempted to cross the road from west to east in front of the lorry, leading to the collision. Hassan fell to the roadway where the lorry reportedly ran over him, fatally crushing his head. Emergency medical technicians arrived promptly at the scene and pronounced Hassan dead. His body is awaiting post-mortem examination as the investigations continue. This incident underscores the need for increased cautions and safety measures for drivers and pedestrians, particularly in busy traffic areas. Reporting for Headline News Update, Malcolm Carter. Thanks, Malcolm. The government, through the Ministry of Finance, is seeking supplementary funding for over $84 billion to support expanded development programs and additional provisions for the $100,000 cash grant distribution to citizens aged 18 and older. Senior Minister in the Office of the President with Responsibility for Finance, Dr. Ashley Singh, presented the supplementary bills during the 80th sitting of the National Assembly on Monday. The funds include $400 and $56.8 million for immediate needs like security and operational costs, and $84 billion for larger projects. Around $30.5 billion will go towards the cash grants for citizens age 18 and older. The remaining amount will support key ministries like public works, agriculture, health, education, and housing in improving infrastructure and services. The National Assembly will scrutinize the supplementary provisions on November 27th, with approval expected to enable the government to advance its development and social welfare goals. Continuing our coverage of the legislative branch of the government, the National Assembly has unanimously passed amendments to the Deceased Persons Estate Administration Act simplifying the process for families to access funds left by deceased loved ones. Attorney General Anil Nandlal presented the bill on Monday, highlighting that the changes address public concerns and outdated thresholds. The 2024 amendments expand access beyond bank accounts to include credit unions, the national insurance scheme, and cooperative societies, streamlining the process for smaller estates. Previously, families could only withdraw $250 from the deceased account without legal documentation, a limit set nearly a century ago. In 2022, the threshold increased to $750,000. The latest amendment 
broadens the scope and reduces the financial burden on families needing funds for legal fees, funeral costs, or immediate expenses. Minister of Culture, Youth, and Sports Charles Ramson Jr. said the bill comes from grassroots engagements with the public, emphasizing its impact on vulnerable families. The reform aims to ensure quicker access to resources during challenging times. Stick around when we return. Venezuela woman charged with human trafficking. And Second Hope and Justice Center opens in Virgin Eugene. It's the most wonderful time of the year, and we've got the most wonderful deals. Get the perfect gift from Digicel. Grab the Samsung A05 for just $17,900, the A25 for $37,900, or treat yourself to the S24 Ultra for only $205,000. And that's not all. Every phone comes with a free 30-day data plan. Don't wait. These holiday savings won't last forever. Visit your nearest Digicel store today. Digicel, the network for everyone, everywhere. It is the biggest sale of the year going down right here at Clearance. Always keeping you in style. The 29th of November, 2024, Black Friday sale where you get half off store wide. Get half off all your top brands like your Kenneth Cole and Dockers footwear, Puma and Nike sneakers, men's suits, shirts, Levi jeans, and jerseys. Get half off on ladies' footwear, handbags, dresses, tops, working suits, and so much more. So keep the date in mind, November 29th, 2024, right here at Clarence, half off store wide. Clarence, always keeping you in style. Good, good girl, forget things. Good. Ah! Who's the problem, Granny? I want money for bar for do a surgery. I was dancing and I fall and fracture my hip. If you need some quick money, you should check Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop, lot 238 South Road, Border, Georgetown. Get jewelry made to order in just 72 hours. We also accept vehicles. Lenders, best rates, longest payback period. Boys, I get through. Plus, I could dance again. <laughs> Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Hello, my fellow TikToker followers. He is credit. And today, all we will be making Chinese noodles with peppies, chow mein, chicken fritters, and spice cake. For the noodles, all we will be using peppies, black pepper, kasri, Chinese sauce, soy sauce, garlic sauce, paprika, Chinese seasoning, chow mein seasoning, fried spice, and our purpose seasoning. Next, this chicken that we marinate in, soak for all you who know nothing, with peppies, green seasoning, miracle seasoning, pepper sauce, chicken seasoning, paprika, garlic powder, dark seasoning, black pepper, onion powder, and ginger powder, and document plastic flour, and then this butter we make with this quick piece powder, and we fry, I mean, boil in oil, we serve with peppies, barbecue sauce. Radical went to the supermarket, and she probably buy up nothing of things. She feels she alone can cook, but she wrote in even wrong. He shaped like a guy in a mop. Peppies has a wide range of ingredients available at supermarkets nationwide. Peppies, we put the pep back into your kitchen. holiday specials are here from now until december 6 enjoy our exclusive christmas packages get one service free when you book three services complimentary mattress cleaning with any yard power washing service free small carpet cleaning with every chair set cleaning and steaming connect with us on facebook and instagram or visit us at 3430 jacksonville north rumbles or georgetown you can also give us a call on 689-7558-64604 
or 639-6365. Start your holiday preparations early with Fortune Investment Company and let us make your season shine. GCOM is currently conducting a national registration exercise. Who can register? Anyone who will be 14 years or older by December 31, 2024, and is a Guyanese citizen by birth, descent, naturalization, or is a citizen from a Commonwealth country living in Guyana for one year or more. Where to apply for registration? You are required to visit the registration office that is responsible for the registration of persons in your area of residence to apply for registration. Office hours, Monday to Thursday, 8 to 12 hours, 13 hours to 16 hours, 30, and Friday from 8 to 12 hours and 13 to 15 hours, 30. The offices will be closed on weekends and holidays. This registration exercise will end on November 29, 2024. For further information, contact the GCOM on 2250-2779 or visit the website www.gcom.org.gy. Welcome back. In this report, Dale Jarvis tells us that a Venezuela woman has been granted bail after appearing in court on human trafficking charges, with one of her victims being only a minor. Here's more. A 27-year-old Venezuelan national, Andriana Jimenez, has been charged with three counts of trafficking in persons and one count of unlawfully withholding identification documents. She appeared before Acting Chief Magistrate Faith Magosti at the Georgian Magistrates Court, where she pleaded not guilty to all charges. The charges were laid under the Combatant of Trafficking in Persons Act. Jimenez, who resides on Robb Street, Georgetown, was granted bail totaling $1 million, compromising $300,000 for each trafficking charge and $100,000 for withholding identification documents. The charges stem from allegations of trafficking offenses committed between May and August 2024 involving three victims, including a 14-year-old girl. Jimenez is accused of exploiting the victims and withholding their identification as part of the operation. Under bail conditions, Jimenez must surrender her passport to the court, report to the police regularly, and refrain from contacting the victims. The next court hearing is scheduled for December 16, 2024. Investigations are ongoing. Reporting for Headline News Update, Dale Jervis. Thanks, Dale. The government has invested over $400 million to enhance the road network in Ituni Region 10 under the Ministry of Public Works Road Program at a signing ceremony on Friday. Prime Minister Brigadier Retired Mark Phillips announced that 32 local contractors were selected based on community recommendations. The initiative is expected to create jobs for over 200 residents and foster economic growth in the area. Additionally, the Prime Minister revealed plans to install a Starlink internet connection at Howell Primary School by next week, addressing the lack of ICT facilities in the community. He also pledged to evaluate the need for a secondary school in Ituni. Public Works Minister Bishop Juan Edgehill emphasized the project's significance, urging contractors to hire local workers. The roadwork, set for completion by December 20th, aims to improve accessibility, commuter safety, and economic opportunities for that region. In other news, Prime Minister Mark Phillips inaugurated the second Hope and Justice Center in Virgin Eugene, offering shelter, legal aid, and support to violence victims. Malcolm Carter has more details. As Guyana continues its 16 days of campaign on the elimination of violence against women, Prime Minister Brigadier Retired Mark Phillips inaugurated the Second Hope and Justice Center in Virgin Ujian, Region 3 on Monday. Prime Minister Phillips calls it a sanctuary of hope and a fortress for justice for victims of violence and vulnerable populations. The facility will provide comprehensive support services, including counseling, legal aid, health care, and temporary shelter. It also addresses socioeconomic challenges through skill training, financial literacy, and employment services. The Prime Minister said this is more than policies. It's about care, love, and compassion. He emphasized the government's broader mission to make justice more accessible, restorative, and compassionate nationwide. The Virgin Ocean Center, a collaborative effort involving the ministries of legal affairs and human services, the Spotlight Initiative, and the Inter-American Development Bank, is part of a national strategy to reform the justice system 
and reduce cycles of abuse and incarceration. Plans are underway to establish similar centers across Guyana, ensuring justice and support for all citizens. Reporting for Headline News Update, Malcolm Carter. Thanks, Malcolm. Don't go away after the break. Trump vows tariff on Mexico, Canada, and China on day one. As China spike in random killings, authorities take measures to calm fears. This Christmas, Digicel is bringing you the gift of millions. millions. Ten lucky customers will become millionaires, millionaires for Christmas. Christmas. Top up $1,000 or more for your chance to win $1 million. Turn your Christmas into a celebration of cash and cheer. Two new millionaires every week. Wait, wait, wait. The countdown to Christmas millions is on. Top up $1,000 or more today for your chance to win. Digicel, the network for everyone, everywhere. Good, good girl, forget things. Oh, Who's the problem, Granny? I want money for bar for those surgery. I was dancing and I fall and fracture my hip. If you need some quick money, you should check Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop, lot 238 South Road, Border, Georgetown. Get jewelry made to order in just 72 hours. We also accept vehicles. Lenders, best rates, longest payback period. Boys, I get through. Plus, I could dance again. Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Furnishing your home or office has never been easier. Here at Kisum's, our inventory of locally made and imported furniture, offered at amazing prices, will leave you wanting more. From vinyl, floor rugs, and carpets, bedroom, dining, and living room sets, mattresses, pillows, office desks, chairs, and filing cabinets, outdoor benches, and tables, we have a piece of furniture for every room imaginable in your home or office. Check out our flagship store at Industrial Site Rheinfeld or one of our branches in New Amsterdam, Port Morant, Riverton and Camp Street, Kisun's Furniture, furnishing homes for over 50 years. Sneak away with the gift of sight from modern optical services. Let our professional team examine and prescribe what's best for your eyes. Come small to make fashionable faces. See us for a full line of optical services, including brand name and prescription eyewear. Yeah. Modern Optical Services, 316 Mill Street, Georgetown, telephone 226 We are back. Our holiday specials are here. From now until December 6, enjoy our exclusive Christmas packages. Get one service free when you book three services. Complimentary mattress cleaning with any yard power washing service. Free small carpet cleaning with every chair set cleaning and steaming. Connect with us on Facebook and Instagram or visit us at 3430 Jacksonville, North Rumbles, or Georgetown. You can also give us a call on 689-7558-646-0405 or 639-6365. Start your holiday preparations early with Fortune Investment Company and let us make your season shine. It is the biggest sale of the year going down right here at Clearance. Always keeping you in style the 29th of November 2024. Black Friday sale where you get half off so wide. Get half off all your top brands like your Kenneth Cole and Dockers footwear, Puma and Nike sneakers, men's suits, shirts, Levi jeans and jerseys. Get half off on ladies footwear, handbags, dresses, tops, working suits and so much more. So keep the date in mind, November 29th, 2024, right here at Clarence, half off store wide. Clarence, always keeping you in style. The Guyana Elections Commission GCOM is currently conducting a national registration exercise. Who can register? Anyone who will be 14 years or older by December 31st, 2024 and is a Guyanese citizen by birth, descent, naturalization or is a citizen from a Commonwealth country living in Guyana for one year or more. Types of transactions. Anyone eligible for registration is required to visit the registration office responsible for his or her area of residence to apply for registration. Persons who are already registered could apply for a name change if they have changed their names since they were last registered. Apply for corrections if there is incorrect information on their national ID cards. 
persons who are desirous of conducting any of the above transactions must provide the relevant supporting documents. Persons who are already registered could request that their photographs be retaken if the quality of the photographs on their ID cards is unacceptable. Collect their new ID cards if they have not done so as yet. This registration exercise will end on November 29, 2024. For further information, please contact GCOM on the following hotline numbers 2250277 or visit the GCOM website at www.gcom.org.gy. Welcome back. Now we take a look at what's happening in the region and around the world. Good evening. I'm Malcolm Carter and welcome to tonight's regional and international news. The United Nations has evacuated staff from Haiti's capital, Port-au-Prince, amid escalating gang violence and clashes with police and armed civilians. A UN helicopter transported evacuees to Cap Haitian while US diplomats were flown out by an Air Force aircraft. Port au Prince Airport has been disrupted by gunfire targeting planes. The UN emphasized its commitment to Haiti and continued humanitarian efforts despite temporarily reducing its presence in the capital. Aid organizations like Doctors Without Borders and Food for the Poor have also suspended operations due to safety concerns. Widespread violence and gang roadblocks are jeopardizing critical services and food deliveries across the country. Meanwhile, Donald Trump has announced plans to impose new tariffs on China, Mexico, and Canada on his first day as president in 2025, aiming to curb illegal immigration and drug trafficking. He proposes a 25% tariff on Mexican and Canadian goods and a 10% additional tariff on Chinese imports. These measures could escalate trade tensions, disrupt global supply chains, and increase prices for U.S. consumers. Mexico and Canada stress their strong trade ties with the U.S., while China warns of the adverse effects of a trade war. Trump's proposal reflects his campaign's aggressive trade and border security stance. Former FARC fighters in Colombia have taken responsibility for some of the rebel group's actions during the Civil War. Al Jazeera's Alessandro Rampietti reports. Seven regional commanders of former FARC rebels in Colombia faced their victims for the first time on Monday. It was part of a public hearing of Colombia's peace tribunal, where the guerrilla group accepted responsibility and asked for forgiveness in the kidnappings of hundreds of people in the country's southwest, at the height of Colombia's long civil conflict. The chaining, the confinement, the violence with which we prevented their movement, the damage to their families. We deprived them of seeing their children grow old. The tribunal described in great detail how for years the FARC leadership ordered the abductions of military officials, politicians and regular people as part of the war on the state. The most famous, the kidnapping of 12 deputies of the Valle Regional Assembly in Cali in 2002 to pressure a prisoner's exchange between the group and the government. In the end, 11 deputies were executed. But the majority of the group's hostages were regular Colombians who didn't have the means to pay the ransom, like Henry Sanchez's father, who was killed in captivity in 1994. It was horribly hard to find his body in the middle of a mountain, four years after his abduction, shot at close range and likely tortured with a knife. The hearings coincided with the 8th anniversary of the historic peace deal between the FARC rebels and the Colombian state. And while some are celebrating the country's attempts at reconciliation, many are criticizing the delays in the peace tribunal sentencing and the lack of implementation of the many reforms agreed to in the accord. In a commemoration in the capital, Bogota, the current government recognized the state has so far failed to bring real change to remote areas of the country, where dissident groups of the former rebels continue to operate. But the United Nations mission overseeing peace implementation says there's still hope. In Colombia, you are writing a different story, one of expanding peace and inclusion, comprehensive and lasting peace while still in the works, remains within your reach. 
a bittersweet anniversary for an historic deal that is still waiting to fulfill its promises in a country struggling to leave its bloody history behind. Alessandro Ampietti, Al Jazeera, Bogotá. The Chinese government has ordered a series of measures to tackle a spot of random deadly attacks. Al Jazeera's Rob McBride reports. Under the watchful gaze of security staff, parents drop off their children for the start of morning classes at this elementary school in central Beijing. Recent random attacks targeting groups of children have left many of them understandably nervous. There are too many negative reports about these attacks, and bad people just see them and do copycat attacks. They want to take a revenge on society, and they pick kids as targets because they are weak and vulnerable. Last week, a car plowed into a group of children near a school in Hunan in central China, leaving a number injured. That followed a knife attack at a vocational school in the eastern city of Wuxi that killed eight people and injured 17 others. But the deadliest single attack in years came at the start of this month when a man rammed his car into a crowd in the southern city of Zhuhai, killing 35 people and injuring 43. The authorities say the suspect was acting out of anger over a divorce settlement. Now the new guidelines from the Justice Ministry tell local officials to investigate domestic disputes fully at an early stage to resolve them before potential attackers take revenge against fellow citizens. It's thought China's current economic troubles and diminishing job prospects are contributing to the problem. But Beijing's official response is that the country still enjoys a high degree of social stability. The Chinese government has always taken and will continue to take effective measures to ensure the safety of the people's lives. Whatever the underlying causes, the authorities seem eager to stifle debate about these attacks, often deleting all references to them from social media almost as soon as the victims have been cleared from the scene of the latest violent event. Rob McBride, Al Jazeera, Beijing. Thanks, Malcolm. This brings us to the end of our regional and global news coverage. Up next is the 3D Weather Forecast. And that's it to be two headline news for this Tuesday evening. As we take our leave, we invite you to follow us on Facebook and YouTube. You can tune in tomorrow at 6.30 a.m. for a rebroadcast and at 7 p.m. for more news. Until then, please take care of yourself and each other. <laughs>